know, everything I do in life is, is about the game. She's just one of the best midfielders I know. She's just a very motivated and determined person. I always want more. I always want to improve every single day. Take a page, read my story, hear me now. She's never been on a high school dance. I mean, she gave up a lot to get where she is. This is my legacy! This is a very winning club. They want to be the best at all times. That's what I felt, you know, the first few days that I was here. I was like, this is something that I want to be a part of. Golden, Colorado is where I grew up. It's a small mountain town. My mom wanted me to play football. I was a very, very shy um, little girl, so my mom ended up coaching me for, my gosh, like eight, nine years. She always, as a young girl, said, I'm going to be the best female soccer player in the world. And people would laugh at her. It was funny, I mean, a little five-year-old girl knew what she wanted, and she spent all her time working towards it. When I stepped on the field and I, I touched the ball, I just fell in love with it. It made me so happy and I felt free, and you know, I could forget about everything else going on in the world and in my life. So I would say at about 14, I thought, wow, she's, she is really excelling. She started getting called into the U.S. Women's National Team camps and the ODP programs. Well, she was lucky enough and fortunate enough to get several offers for full ride scholarships. I mean, that you're looking at a lot of money. It's a hard thing to imagine someone giving that up. Thinking of your little girl, you want them to achieve their goals and dreams, and they knew one of mine was to play professionally in Europe. The bottom line, she wanted to play professional. She just said that it would be better training for her. I mean, she was just very focused and strong. PSG had come in the picture. They saw videos of me with youth national team, and basically I flew out there and, and signed a contract to go play, um, go play for PSG uh, professionally. I mean, she was a trailblazer. Kind of started that route to go straight to the pros. And I was 18 in a new culture, a new city. You know, I just didn't really have anyone um, there with me. It was really hard at the time. I mean, she was a big, strong girl, which I think helped her in her career. But, you know, most of the French people aren't built like that. And her coach just thought she was too heavy. I was one of the fittest players on the team. I showed that in our fitness tests. I showed that on the field every single day. but. I still had too much in my fat percentage for them. So the coach at the time had, had said, you're not going to play until that goes down. At that point, I was like, all right, I'm done. <laughs> I'm absolutely done. This isn't for me. Sometimes in the way it's done or uh, how they try to help you is not always the right way. Everybody is different. Every woman is different. And um, yeah, women's bodies are just different than men's bodies. I wasn't like eating properly, I would skip meals. It was incredibly difficult to get through. She didn't really share that with us at the time, which makes me feel bad too that she went through that alone. She finally just kind of started doing her own thing. She ate what she needed to eat to perform. No person is going to tell me, you know, what percent or whatever to make me a, a good footballer. You can't, like, keep me off the field. At the end of my period, um, I stayed three and a half years there. I was doing really well. I was starting every single game. I was playing some of the best football. Yeah, ultimately, I was that kind of player that you couldn't take off the, off the pitch. It's kind of interesting. So this used to be the kids' toy room right here. And we just, over time, the toys went away and we shifted to building the Lindsay Olympic room here. <laughs> it's kind of a good synopsis of what's happened with her over, over time. With the national team, it was very important to be in the U.S. This has been my goal ever since you know, I was that little girl.
I moved to the Portland Thorns. Portland is just, it's, you know, the soccer city in, in the U.S. It was amazing. I think that was the best club for me to be a part of. I ended up making the Olympic qualifying roster and then I ended up going to the Olympics. She didn't get a lot of play time in that Olympics, but she was just happy to be a part of it. Going out in penalties is never fun, but it is what it is. Lindsay Horan, beautifully done. It's 1-1. Dahlquist wins it for Sweden. And the United States, the reigning Olympic champions and world champions, go out in the quarterfinals. 2018, I played one of the best years of my life. Got MVP um, of the league that year. That led us into the World Cup, which, you know, that's where you want to be, that's where you want to be playing. It's this photo of Lindsay at the World Cup when she scored the goal in the first three minutes, wasn't yes. it? We were just ecstatic. And her face kind of says it all. I've never seen her that happy. No, I haven't either. <laughs> uh, I started uh, four out of the seven games. Played one of the best games of my life in the semifinal against England. For the final, I was not chosen to start the game. We got an early injury. I think Kelly O'Hara had a, a concussion, so Krieger had to, to sub in for her. So um, I was not subbed into the game for the World Cup final, which it's heartbreaking. It's, it's so hard. But ultimately, it was the best thing that's ever happened, winning a World Cup medal. It was one of the most incredible experiences of my life. Olympics at Tokyo was crazy. I personally felt like I had a good tournament. I played a lot. I, I think I did a lot of, of good things. Ertz with the header back across, and that's goal number two. Lindsay Horn. They are three points on the board now. The USA against Canada is underway in the semi-final of the women's football tournament at Tokyo 2020. It is a penalty. It's a penalty to Canada. And Fleming scores. Canada celebrate absolute jubilation. It's finished. The USA nil, Canada won. But they will be hugely disappointed to have lost out to their neighbors. Once they realized they weren't going to get the gold, I think they all decided, let's come back with the bronze. They all really stepped up and played well in that last game. They have done it. The United States of America seal the bronze medal. They've had to work for it. To get a medal at the end of that and with the way we played was actually incredible. Elle a incroyablement étoffé son jeu depuis son passage au PSG. On était super contents quand, quand on a appris qu'elle qu venait chez nous un an. Elle s'est fondue dans le groupe comme si elle y avait toujours, toujours été. This football is so nice. It's just so different from you know what I get in in the U.S. And I wanted to be a part of that. And then I think. Part of me was just like, I want to prove to myself that I could go play in Europe again and not have that same experience. She just feels very comfortable in Lyon with the city and the players. You kind of see this map here. We've been all over the world with her. We're still following her around. Yeah, like... <laughs> New Zealand and Australia. We've never been there and get to go this year. It's never been done before. I think it would be one of the coolest things in the world, three World Cups in a row. Uh, it's pretty exciting, it's pretty intense. I think overall they feel pretty good about their chances. It's a young team, but uh, they seem to be meshing very well. It's a lot of pressure there as well, but it's the coolest pressure in the world.